Thank you very much. Please send her in. <laughs> Mr. Tabler, may I speak to you for a moment? Of course, Cindy. Have a seat. Uh, do you need an extra chair? No, it's just, it's just me. I know. <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Um, this is a little difficult for me to talk about. Well, Cindy, I mean, if something's weighing heavy on your mind, <laughs> I'm here to listen. Well, as you know, I have been working very closely with Brian Weimeyer, mm -hmm. and recently some of his behavior has entered the realm of harassment. Is he harassing Barbara? No. Is it Carol? The... No. Is it one of the guys? No, it, it's me. He's been harassing me. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, is he making pig noises behind your back? No, why would he do that? I, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure this out. I... Well, I, I'm trying to tell you he is harassing me sexually. <laughs> Thank you very much. I needed that, Cindy. Thank you. I'm going to tell that to the boys in the boardroom. Thank you very much. Look, Brian, he has been, he has been sexually harassing me. Well, have you seen him drinking? <laughs> no. Did you notice a bump on his head? No. Please, just tell me what happened, all right? All right. I was in the snack area. Of course. <laughs> and I was eating a banana. Cindy. <laughs> what? A banana. Y yes, I was eating a banana. Not a bear claw? <laughs> no. What does a bear claw have to do with anything? I, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm trying to figure this out. Please Help me out, please. I am trying to tell you. <sighs> I was in the snack area, I was eating a banana, and Brian comes in and he says, boy, I sure wish I was that banana right now. See, I think you're reading too much into this. I think, you know, he just meant that he literally just wants to be a banana. But that doesn't make any sense. It's the only thing it could be. That's not all. He pinched my bottom. How could you tell? Because I felt it. You, you felt it? Was he, did he use a pair of pliers? <laughs> pliers? What, what do pliers have to do with anything? I don't know. I'm no, just... he used his fingers. <laughs> uh, okay, I think, I think I know what happened. Um, when someone sits in food and they get up, you know, I see it and I reach over and I grab the food and I, I you know, take it off their clothes and stuff. And, you know, I think that's probably what Brian was trying to do for you. He was trying to clean you up after one of your feedings. I didn't sit in any food. You know, this has happened to me before, and no one ever seems to believe me. Not my family, not my coworker, not even my minister. What about the guy at the fast food window? I don't eat fast food. Cindy. Well, this time... I secretly tape recorded Brian coming on to me. You are the sexiest, most beautiful woman I've ever seen, and if we don't make love, I am going to explode. <laughs> Barb, listen, I am so sorry. I owe you an apology. You watch this. Miss Presby, could you please have Brian Waymeyer fired immediately? Thank you, Mr. Tabler. You're welcome. I cannot have somebody working for me who is totally out of his <laughs> mind. <laughs> I appreciate it. It is very difficult being a single, attractive woman in the work world. I know you know nothing about that. I think that makes two of us, sweetie. <laughs> anyway, listen, I'm really worried about that chair. Is it an antique? No, it's made of mere steel. Oh. <laughs> Stephen Craig, I'm a writer on Mad TV. You know, everybody loves sex, except Dick Cheney. Oh, no, 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 wait. he's screwing the nation. Oh, oh snap! Uh, I, I like sex too, but I'm married. Which means I get sex about once a month. And you know I'm inflating that number for TV.
Anyway, I did a very, very bad thing. I put a hidden camera in my bedroom to film me and my wife having sex. See, I thought I could watch that tape over and over and it would feel like I was having a lot of sex. I'm about to do another really, really bad thing. I'm gonna show you those tapes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is me and my wife having sex. later. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is that gonna kill you? Huh? You can do anything you want. You can go to sleep, you can eat a piece of cake, I don't care. Okay, so what am I, just a receptacle? Well, that's an ugly word, you know, but yes, that would mean this. <laughs> Why couldn't you do this earlier when I was in the mood? When were you in the mood? Earlier, when I put my hand on your shoulder. That's the signal? You know what? God, that's so frustrating. Well, since when did that become the signal? You know what? In the future, Kim, when you want to have sex, this is what you're going to do. You're going to turn to me and say, let's have sex. That's the signal. That's the new signal. You owe me sex. Oh, great. You okay. owe me sex. Fine. I owe you sex. Oh, yes. No, no, no. Right now. No. You owe me sex right now. You owe me sex right now. God, get off! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Are you okay? No, I'm not. What? <laughs> Wow, that's really sexy, having your wife laugh as you fall off a of bed. After that little incident, I went out and I bought this book. It's How to Argue and Win Every Time by Jerry Spence. And what this book says is basically you should ask for a lot more than you want. Therefore, if you get knocked back, it's okay because you got your bottom line. And my bottom line is to get sex twice a week. Watch and learn. You want to have sex? Um, I'm reading. Okay. I want to talk to you about something for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for whatever reason, um, you know, uh, you don't want to have sex with me as much as uh, I want to have sex with you, so uh, um, let me run through some other possible options, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what about letting me have a mistress? No. Okay, then what about this? We take separate vacations and we can screw around if we want. No. Okay, then let's have a three-way with a woman. No. With a man? No. Um, okay, what about this? You be my sex slave for a week and I'll be your sex slave for a week. No. Then let me videotape us having sex. No. Uh, then have sex with him twice a week. No. Once a month. No. Once every three months. Deal. Okay, you got it. Deal. Okay? All right. Stick to it. All right. Woo! All right? <laughs> Stick to it? Yes. All right. <laughs> Boy, you'd think I'd give up. Hell no! When it comes to sex, I'm like a dog with a bone. Watch this awesome sex scene. Hey. Yeah. I have to go to the bathroom, okay? okay. Don't move. No, no, no. Okay, no, stay no. in the mood. Stay in the mood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. I'm cold. Honey, are you cold? No, I'm fine. I get something. <laughs> what the? F what the? F Steven! See, there's a camera here. What? Where? Under the clothes, right there. Oh my God! Who put that there? F you, Steven. You put it there. I, 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 I thought you said I, I could film us. Having sex. I said no. I okay, said all no, right, Stephen. Right. I'll turn it off. I'll turn it off. I'll turn it off. There, I'll turn it off, okay? <laughs> For some reason, I cannot get a shot of me and my wife doing it. I don't know what the problem is. Uh, Stephen, there's one more tape. We got one more? Okay. What is this one? Okay, that goes back. All right. <laughs> Turn it off! Turn it off! 
Who are those two guys? You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Anyway, uh, that's it. Have a nice day. That's not funny. You did that on purpose. I, you did it on purpose. I, I did. You did it on I, purpose. I, <laughs> that jerk. Very funny. Get it off of me, jackass. You're an idiot too. You moron. Don't look. Get off. I'll punch you in your balls. <laughs> Diddy, Kim Jong Il, Bad Boy exclusive. Yeah, this is a world renowned collabo. I used to be a player in the clubs, packing heat, no one could compete. That was until I met a man so ill. That's Kim Jong Il from North Korea. He's so bad, you have no idea. Talk to him, Kim. Let him know. You know what I mean? I build on Damn, listen. Yo, hit him one more time. Come on. I got crazy brain. Make Saddam look sane, everyone afraid. Nobody know what I'm gonna do. Uh uh. I got solid gold Mercedes and lots of tall blonde ladies, so I get laid. I think you don't get this kind of tail hung blitz. Uh uh. I'm only five foot three, but nobody gonna f with me, cause I'm five foot three. Intercontinental ballistics, baby. In my Stalinist regime, I hate coochie getting machine with my mom. That Scandinavian chick was tight, yo. Here's how it is, mommy. He's a twisted commie. Got some big bombs coming, saving for a small salami. World's in a craze, makes Korea sing his praise. Plus, he looks like Arnold from the TV show Happy Days. Take that, take that. Hey, Mr. UN, go look at a rock again for bomb, bomb, bomb. Nuclear, ha <laughs> I'm not very handsome, but I hold the whole George Bush, you mad at me? Call me. USA, baby. Take that, take that. That's good. Okay, you're gonna sing a deal. I'm waiting 45 minutes for my food. Come on. I'm still waiting on them Nito Nacheritos. Then you will continue to wait, Loretta. <laughs> because Nito Nacherito is a made up word. It is the gringo, stupid, old bastard name of the Bastille. If a Bastille were to give birth to a Nito Nacherito, it would be forced to scream in horror at its ugly bastard face. Then it would have to strangle it, throw it into the river, and deny to the village elders that it was ever with a child in the first place. <laughs> Look, Jorge, we go through this every day. Now just make the food. And why you gotta make it in a big dirt hole? Ooh! You tore up the linoleum and the tar paper? That's nasty. In Mexico, we make everything in the earth. We make love in the earth. We make number two in the earth. And their ancestors' bodies rot in the earth. It is the same earth, the same sacred ground, where we cook authentic Mexican food. <laughs> it still look like a dirt hole to me. Now look, you deal with the customers. I'm gonna go deal with a nicotine addiction. <laughs> Hi, I'm still waiting for my heart smart whole lotta toast a lotta. <sighs> Sir, there is so much wrong with what you just said to me <laughs> that I don't even know where to begin. But begin, I will. <laughs> Now, what is a holada tostalada, huh? Is it a lara tostada? Or is it an enchilada that you want a lara? How about I add a piñata? Then you'd have a heart smart whole lara tostalada piñata. I just want some Mexican food without cheese. Oh, I see. I now know what you require, senor. Oh. <laughs> No Mexican food. Take it easy, hombre, okay? I'm just trying to stay in shape. <laughs> in Mexico, 
We eat as much cheese as we want, and still our bodies are sculpted like Mayan gods. How do we do this, you ask me? Go ahead, ask me. How do you do this? I will tell you! We can eat the cheese because we stay in shape making the cheese. From the moment the cow is born, we carry her on our shoulders until she has fully grown. Then, with the suction of our very own lips, we extract the milk from her teeth. Then we turn the precious bovine nectar into cheese. And then we celebrate with a cheese fiesta! Wherein all the villagers compete in the cheese games. There is the cheese throw, the cheese jump, and the ever popular cutting of the cheese. <laughs> That's true. How come half the people in Mexico are obese? Ha ha! And I would tell you, senor! <laughs> oh! Ah! Now get the hell out! Don't ever... Ha ha! Ha ha! You can't be assaulting the customers. I don't want you talking about the rest of them. And stop fake mixing. <laughs> yeah, I ordered the Atkins friendly bowl of, and I'm probably pronouncing this wrong, Supa della Orina. Yes, well, I pray that you are pronouncing it wrong, senor. Otherwise, you just ordered a bowl of urine soup. <laughs> Don't bust my balls, Pancho. Just give me the Atkins friendly thing. I do not know who this Dr. Atkins is. The only doctor here is Dr. Jorge, and I think that I have an appointment right now for an amputation! Ah! 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 There! You just lost three pounds! All right, Carl Jr., we we're here. We're at Florida University, big F.U. Go <laughs> check out the college. Hope you're feeling better with your mononucleosis, you know, so we'll check it out for you. <sighs> That's chafing. Checking out the school for my son Carl. He's uh, Carl Jr. is looking to come to this college here next season. He's back at home with the mononucleosis. So I think we're just coming on by to kind of check things out for it, put it on tape for him so he can check it out. You think any of you gals would uh, like to be hooked up with my son? Let me see. Oh. <laughs> you have a boyfriend already? <laughs> for good grades here or something? It's not working. Huh? It's not working. It's not working? You smoking too much pot? <laughs> Uh-oh. You gotta lay off the pot. That's all it is, lay off the pot. <laughs> yeah, hey, well, here's the library. See, do you have any books on dorm life? Social habits? Huh? Well, I have to do a search. Oh, all right. It's quiet in here, isn't it? <laughs> Administration's office? No. Oh, it's not. You guys get detention or something? You're really, really No, we're doing study, special study. Oh, your special day. studies? <laughs> That's special like retarded. I didn't say you were retarded. You said you were retarded. <laughs> See, Carl, I'm going to test out the enthusiasm of the school. I don't want you coming to the school where the kids are all mamby pamby. <clears throat> you know, they kind of got to see, you know, they got interest. Back in my day, we were activists, so. <laughs> See, who's an active student here? Who wants to rally? Who's up for it, huh? <laughs> I'm sick of the food here at the college. Tuna, 
casserole to fill my mouth holes. We want meat that can't be beat. See? We want meat that can't be beat. <laughs> Mama's coming home anytime soon. <laughs> Are you one of the millions of Americans who think they need plastic surgery? My first guess is a 17-year-old girl who says she is fat and ugly, and she would like to have plastic surgery as soon as she turns 18. Please help me welcome Susan. <laughs> so, Susan, how you doing? I'm okay. A little, <laughs> little nervous. That's okay, Susan. There's an expression where I come from. Being nervous is God's way of saying something's up. Here's what's up to you, Susan. You are an ugly woman. Well, I don't know if ugly is the right word. Trust me, sweetheart, it's an understatement. <laughs> there is not a plastic surgeon alive who is talented enough to make you pretty or even average looking. Can we get a, can we get a real tight shot of Susan's face so the audience know what I'm talking about? See that? There you go. All right. I want you to say I'm a very ugly person beyond repair. All right, now that sounds cruel, but the minute you say that is the minute you begin living your authentic life. Okay, um, I am an ugly person. A very ugly person. Very ugly. Very ugly. I am a very ugly person. Beyond repair. Beyond repair who will never have sex with anyone unless you commit female rape. You didn't say that before. I know, it just, it just came to me. It just came to me, darling, all right? So why don't you put it all together for me, okay? Go ahead. I am a very I'm ugly person, person beyond, beyond repair, repair who will never, never have, have sex with, with anyone unless, unless I, I commit, commit female, female rape. rape. How do you feel? Terrible. You're home, darling. That's how ugly people feel. Uh -huh. Thank you for being on my show. Give her a big round of applause. Thank you. And my next guest is a 25-year-old woman who has already undergone plastic surgery for breast implants. She is thinking about going in again and increasing her breast size even more. Please help me welcome Candy. So Candy, tell us your story. Well, when I first had these breasts done, I thought that I would feel differently about myself, but I didn't. So then maybe I thought I didn't get them big enough. <laughs> okay. Well, now let me tell you something real straight, all right? Okay. Nobody is perfect. Mm -hmm. But you'd be real close if you gassed up those fun balloons just a couple of sizes bigger, all right? Well, that's what I want to do, but my sister says that I would look freakish. Hmm. Is your sister a man? No. <laughs> okay, let me tell it to you real straight, darling, all right? The only thing you need to concern yourself with is how you look to a real man, all right? <laughs> okay. 
there's, a, there's an expression where I come from. The cow with the biggest udders has the most farmers pulling on her teats. <laughs> you got a little, a little gas bubble or something going on? They leak sometimes and it comes out my mouth. <laughs> Thank you, Candy, for being on the show. My next guest is a former Miss America, and her boyfriend would like her to undergo plastic surgery for a more youthful appearance. Please help me welcome Janice. So, Janice, Tell us how you feel about plastic surgery. Well, Phil, I, I, Dr. Phil, excuse That's me. That's all right, darling. <laughs> you know, there's an expression where I come from. I'm not really a doctor. <laughs> um, well, Dr. Phil, uh, I flat out refuse to have plastic surgery of any kind. I'm a very happy person. I'm happy with the way I look. And I just, I feel attractive inside and out. I see. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my God, I think you broke my nose. Oh, I know I did. I heard something click. <laughs> And I did it for a reason, all right? Uh, well, two. Number one, never forget that my first name is Doctor. <laughs> Number two, your beauty can be taken away from you as quickly as a punch in the nose. I don't understand. Okay. Phil, Doctor Phil. <laughs> There's an expression where I come from. You either get it or you don't, all right? And you're gonna get it after the show. Get going. Get going. It's me, Oprah. I'm going to surprise my good friend, Dr. Phil, by making a disguised appearance on his show, which I own. Come on, girlfriends, let's have some fun. My next guest has already had plastic surgery, and she says that her life has never been better. Please help me welcome Opal. <laughs> so, Opal, now it says you've already had plastic surgery. Uh, yes, I did. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, Opal, you know, if I hadn't seen on my card right here that you had had plastic surgery, I would have suggested plastic surgery, all right? Now, I'm a real straight shooter, and you are a mess, darling, all right? I mean, I would suggest that you have liposuction of at least 50 pounds from your neck alone, you know? Philip! Oprah! Oprah! I knew it was you. I, I, sw I swear I knew it was you. Pl please don't take away my show. Please don't take away my show, Oprah. Please. Get off, Philip. Yes, Oprah. Absol absolutely, Oprah. Please. Please don't take my show away. Philip, you have sorely, sorely disappointed me. <laughs> please, Oprah. Please. Not my head. Not my head. Not my head. Oh! Some of the Winfrey's Dr. Phil show, Pay Their Own Way, on Life Lesson Number 8, Pay Your Own Way! They called him Eminem, and no, he has nothing to do with the candy. His real name is Marshall Mathers, a white rapper whose controversial lyrics tread in the dangerous waters of misogyny and bigotry. I spoke with Eminem, who has no connection with the camera, on the set of his new film, Eight Mile. Now, you have been criticized as a, and I quote, misogynist, homophobe with a potty mouth attitude. How do you to these allegations? Man, I know haters got a diss, but I'm just going to keep doing what I do, you know, nonstop, 24-7. So you claim no culpability, no responsibility to your fan base? Look, people be putting a lot on me, right? But I ain't gonna hear that. 
because I'm just living, you know, my life. And ain't nobody going to stop how I do that. Now, in your song, Bad Influence, you say, don't be sure of it. I don't promote violence. I just encourage it. Now, what effect <laughs> do you think that kind of lyric has on impressionable young people? Damn, I, all I'm doing is preaching, all right? And preaching reality like y'all do on the Nizus. And why don't you check this? I got something called freedom of speech, right? I mean, people were bagging on Martin Luther King back in the day, but should we have shut his ass down? Ooh, <laughs> There's really no comparison between the two of you. Martin Luther King Jr. never went around promoting gay bashing or violence against women. Yeah, he was too busy banging bitches outside his marriage. Oh, uh, the bitch there, boy. <laughs> With the King family very well. They're my peeps. You feel me, dog? Chill, sucker. All I'm saying is I write what I know. Yeah, but all you nizzo is hate. And ten-year-olds be hearing your albums, oh, biatch. <laughs> they call CDs, Grandpa, and Newsflash. I'd rather watch 2020 Downtown than 60 minutes. It's going to take me less than 60 seconds to bring your shipment to an M&M. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, I didn't mean you any disrespect, sir. Did you just call me boy Q-tip? Uh, no, no, Mr. Bradley. No, I think you did. I think you did. And you ain't nothing but a bug eyed punk ass cracker. Now, uh, hold on there, sir. I, I see no reason for you to make a personal attack on my character. Now, I'm taking off my glasses, bro. That's step one. Come on, character? Oh, this bitch be talking about character? You got about as much character as a pile of hot summer dog dookie. I don't mean you any disrespect, sir. Just please don't hurt me. I killed a man once when I was on assignment in Cambodia. <laughs> trying to get all up in my grill when I was going to do a toe I had to take out an ink pen, shove it up his nose, clear all up through his brain. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Say it again, Slim. I said, I'm sorry, sir. This week, the whole world is thinking about a war with Iraq. Andy Rooney has got his mind on Gwyneth Paltrow. I never noticed how many public events Gwyneth Paltrow shows up at. I don't know about you, but my only free time is on the weekends, which I spend cleaning out my garage and taking my Parkinson's medicine. I don't have Parkinson's, but I take the medicine so I don't get it. Gwyneth Paltrow seems to be everywhere. Here she is in London at the premiere of Knock Around Guys. Here she is again two days later in Croatia on the yacht of her friend Valentino. Getting to all these places must take its toll on her mind and body. So why does she do it? I have a theory. I think she's crazy and craves publicity the way the Irish crave booze. <laughs> women are like that. They're all crazy bitches. If we didn't need women to procreate, we could use the meat from their bodies to feed homeless men. <laughs> around by a new world. What? That ain't nothing compared to getting your neck snapped by one pop. I don't know about you, but don't you just hate it when your lungs collapse? I can't breathe. <laughs> We're going to go to the jungle and talk to my man, Jim Rome, who's talking smack with Shaq. Thanks, Aries. Our guest tonight is the daddy, the big fella, or a guy I affectionately like to refer to as Clank Fu. Shaquille O'Neal, welcome to the jungle. <laughs> you know, I usually don't do these kind of interviews, you know, but I hope you the best, so I'm here. Plus, I should be at home, very my surgically repaired toe, because it hurt like hell when I drove my hammer down here, but I'm here. I'm ready to talk. And I thoroughly appreciate you coming. So let's get right to it. The big question, which is on everybody's mind. Yes. Shaq, how's Kobe? Kobe. What the hell are you asking me about Kobe for? Listen, man, I didn't hobble all the way down here. You'd ask me questions about Kobe. It's Shaq time. Shaq and Rangers in the house. Yeah, of course. Shaq, have you ever seen Kobe's wife? What? Oh, come on, man. Easy, big man. Don't get bent. All I'm saying is I've seen Kobe's wife. And I was pretty impressed. In fact, as ball and chains go, she is epic. Do you concur? 
Man, what the hell are you talking about? It's just <laughs> talking smack with Shaq. You better have a question for me. Hey, of course I do. Shaq, you've won the last three NBA championships. Once your toe has healed, would you do Kobe's wife? Hey, no, no more Kobe. No more Kobe's wife. If you have a question for Shaq, you need to ask it. I want to know. Right, right. Shaquille O'Neal, who made worse movies, you or your sister, Tatum O'Neal? And has there ever been a worse flick than Kazam? You robbed the public of their jack, man. That's it. I'm out of here. I'll see you in the parking lot. <laughs> I guess tonight's been Shaquille O'Neal. Hey, thanks for coming in the jungle. You can kiss my big black ass. Yeah, I can, but I won't. Back to you, Aries. Thanks, Jim. My man, Shaq is all right. Now, Andy Marcel Katzman is here with a hard-hitting report on drugs and baseball. Take it away, Ann. Thank you, Aries. Getting hit takes on an entire. But, but first, game. first. And in baseball. My show, baby, my show. The that my, I spent the last my, year. My show, my show. <laughs> but first, here's my man, John Madden's report on the big Monday night matchup. I spent the last year. How you doing, John? And what a week we had here getting ready for, for the big game. We, we rolled in late on Tuesday, and we had a, had a dinner. Then Wednesday, we got up, had a breakfast, a lunch, and then a, another dinner because another day. Then uh, on Thursday, we had a breakfast, a big lunch, and a dinner. Then Friday, <laughs> then Friday came around. Then we had a continental breakfast and, and a really big dinner. And, and today, we had breakfast, and then we're, we had lunch. And after this, we're going to have, have another dinner. Then Sunday... Sunday, what we're going to do is we're going to have brunch. Now, uh, brunch is a combination between a, a breakfast and a lunch. And what a person who does, they have a brunch on Sunday. And then on Monday, you go back to the, to the regular breakfast and the regular lunch. Now, that's what we're going to do this Monday. We'll come up, we'll have a regular breakfast, a regular lunch, and, and a dinner. But, hey, <laughs> Aries, that, that's football. <laughs> Thanks, John. Awesome report, my man. Even though the guy didn't even mention the game. However, Andy Marcel Katzman's hard-hitting report is next. Thanks, Aries. All puffed up. But, but first, but first, here's three-time champion Evander Holyfield with a hard-hitting editorial on skyrocketing salaries in sports. Evander, my show, my show. Evander, are athletes making too much? Uh, Annie. My show, all right? It's, it's Spears on Sports. It's Women my... in Sports. All right? Got it. All right. Now, Evander, my question to you is this. Are athletes making too much money or not enough? Basically, at the end of the day, I mean, Sopranos <laughs> at nine, but it, it don't matter because whether you like it or dislike it, uh, it's one, two, three stripes, look out, at the whole, <laughs> whole game. And that's, that's all people going to do, but everybody know that God believe that. <laughs> what? was he talking about? <laughs> Finally tonight, Annie Marcel Katzman in a baseball drug report. Appreciate that. Worked very hard on this report over the last year. I spent time away from my family. See you next time on Spirits on Sports. Hey, Joe. New haircut? No. Hey, Joe. New shoes? No. What's different about Joe? Hey, Joe. Are you sure? No. There's something different about Joe. Hey, Joe. Did you get a promotion? No, no promotion. Joe, what's different with you? What's different with Joe? His doctor has prescribed new blue color contact lenses. Just kidding! It's Viagra, stupid! You're watching Mary Females Here's What? Get ready to raise the roof with your host, Jam
He's on the road. He's an aspirin salesman. <laughs> Hi, Alan. And, uh, yes, I did get that sprinkler head fixed. <laughs> uh, our water bill last month. Ugh. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> Deb, you just sounded like you were from New York. <laughs> did I really? Because... I love to do that. I love to talk in fake accents. Oh. And that is something safe and fun that uh, married females can do, mm -hmm. uh, talk in fake accents. I don't know what you're going to do next. You seem dangerous to me almost. <laughs> oh, well, if you think I'm dangerous, just wait until you meet my Thursday night book buddy, Joni Plaza. <laughs> Okay, so Joni, you, I understand you've been compiling a list of um, crazy but safe things that merry females can do while shopping in Target. Uh -huh. So tell us, what, what are some of these zany, zany ideas? Oh, well, ladies, one fun thing you can do if your significant other's taking too long on the automotive section. <laughs> You're driving a car. <laughs> <laughs> to the fitting room, you shut the door, you wait a while, and then you yell real loud. Oh, no. There's no toilet paper in here! You belong in a padded cell! <laughs> A caution wet floor sign. No. And I moved it <laughs> to a carpeted area. Oh, I need to stand up to do this. Can I stand? Oh, oh, this? Yeah. Okay. I, I went and I hit a clothing rack, okay? <laughs> and then when people would browse through, I'd change my voice and I'd call out, Actually, no, no, no. no, you can call my husband. <gasps> okay, uh -huh. let's get Rick on the phone. <gasps> oh no, no, he's at work. You wouldn't, you wouldn't. Oh yes, yeah, she will. <laughs> <laughs> Light bulb, etc. This is Rick. <laughs> Hi, Rick. This is Deb Cullen. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am here with your pretty, pretty little wife. And uh, we need for you to corroborate a story in which um, she hid in a clothing rack. And then in, in, in an impish voice, she yelled out, pick me, pick me. Can you confirm or deny that? Yeah, she did it. Ah! <laughs> oh, I love you. I'll see you later, I go. honey. <laughs> oh, oh, how, how do you think that's bad? I went into one target. 
and I set a fire in the bathroom trash can. <laughs> and then I just went and I sat in my Ford Windstar. I watched the entire building burn. <laughs> <laughs> Top 10 refrigerator magnets. Ooh. <laughs>